but ask Father Rob. Where you send your questions into me, Father Rob Baldwin of St. James Episcopal Church in Pickle, Ohio, and I answer them here for you on the air. Today's question is, I have to admit, a complicated one, but um, I'll just go ahead and throw it out. I received this question that asked, at what time does a person's spirit leave this earth, leave this body, enjoy the full benefits of the resurrection? Now, I have to say, this question, I have to understand the context in which this was being posed to me. It was being, I was at a wedding, actually, and uh, at the reception I was talking to an older woman whose husband was in the late stages of Alzheimer's, uh, a situation in which there was no shred of his personality uh, left in his mind. didn't recognize her, he didn't know anyone, but he was still alive, conscious, uh, aware, but having no history, no memory, no nothing of the thing that made him him. And she said, what happened to the part of him that was him? Is it erased? Is it trapped in his body? Or has it gone on to be embraced into the bosom of our Lord and Savior? To which I have to say, I don't know. You know, there's, there's an old story about this king that uh, would take slaves and put them in barrels and, and car cover them in tar and then put them on these giant scales that he had set up because he wanted to see if there was a change in weight when a person died and the spirit left the body. A cruel experiment, but it illustrates for us that we don't, we are not privy as outsiders to that moment in which a person, as Paul says, is transformed in the twin so whether or not it's the moment the heart stops, or the brain stops functioning, or if it's a second or two later, or if it's earlier, when, as in the case of her husband, the person's self no longer exists because it's been eroded away by a horrible and terrible disease, we don't know how that process works. And to be honest, Jesus talks extensively about the kingdom of God he talks about it in terms of what it means for us in our lives. He doesn't go into a lot of the graphic detail of the, of the methodology by which a person is resurrected and transformed. But I'll tell you the answer that I told her, which is that I believe, as Paul says in the book of Romans, in God there is no darkness at all. It's one of those touchstone passages for me that I go to time and time again when I'm wrestling with difficult theological questions. I say to myself, Based on my own understanding of God's love, which is imperfect, incomplete, and flawed, but still useful, what do I believe is the most loving response? Because when you're talking about a situation in which God has complete and utter control, the implementing of the resurrection, I think we can look for what is the most loving response. And I have to say that when that is my yardstick, or that is my focus point, or that is my compass direction, uh, I would have to say to her that I think that when a person's personality is completely eroded away as a result of a terrible illness like Alzheimer's, or if they've been reduced to a vegetative state as a result of uh, some severe cranial imagery or injury, uh, that God has stepped in at that point because. I believe that even if the spirit is not transformed in the resurrection, that God is there caring and nurturing for that person in the way that only God can. So whether or not they have been invited into the church triumph, as we like to say here, even before their physical body still continues to have those chemical processes in it that we use to find biological life, or if they are just experiencing a special kind of nurturing and care and love that goes on at a level that we can only imagine. That a person who is trapped or whose body continues to persevere after the mind is gone is one way or the other experiencing the compassion and the kindness and the care and the love of God. And whether or not that's the full actualization of the resurrection or just some sort of foretaste of it. Either way, we, 
as the person who cares for and loves that individual who is in that incredibly tragic state, should find comfort and hope, knowing that God is doing for them more than we can ask for. So just to sum up this I don't know when a person experiences the resurrection in conjunction with their physical, biological processes. But I believe in a loving God. I believe in a God that does everything that God can to provide nurture, comfort, support, and peace for those people who are in the most extreme of stress. That's the message of the cross for us. Jesus' self-identification for those who are going through horrible and so regardless of the fact, that regardless of whether they're actually in a full-blown resurrection or just something special, I believe in the message of hope. I believe in the good news of the gospel. I believe that we should look at ourselves and our own fears and anxieties and concerns and say, God, I know that you are with them. I know that you're loving and caring for them. And I will draw peace and hope from the knowledge that in you there is no darkness at all. Thanks for an incredibly thought-provoking question. You can send your questions to me, ask at Father Rob Baldwin, care of St. James Episcopal Church, 200 West High Street, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. You can email them to me at stjamespickwa at yahoo.com, or you can just approach me at a wedding reception and ask me the question like she did. I'll take them anyway. But thank you for your great questions, and I look forward to seeing you here each and every week. Or on YouTube, just type in Ask Father Rob in your YouTube search engine and see all the past episodes of Ask Father Rob. Thanks again, and God bless.